this is Amy with Flower Moxie. I'm going to be building a bouquet today showing you how to work with really awkward shaped flowers. And the two biggest offenders would be uh, hydrangea and delphinium. And we're gonna try to build a bouquet that looks cohesive and not weird with these uh, weird assholes in them. Okay, the reason why uh, they're both blue is because Blue is the rarest flower color there is. Um, you can get lots of pinks, purples, reds. Blue is really hard. You basically have thistle, um, which isn't like a vibrant blue. It's more dusty, so it doesn't show up that much um, as far as in your color palette when you're just relying on thistle. You have tweedia, which I absolutely love, but it, it comes in smaller. It can get chewy easier. In the last few years, I don't know what has hop happened to the crop on tweedia. I think it might have something to do with the pandemic. It just hasn't been as strong lately. It's been hard to source. Um, it comes in looking kind of rough, so I have to lean on the other two flowers, which are delphinium and hydrangea. What makes them negative is that this one's extremely linear, this one's extremely fatty, and it dwarfs everything else. So if you're building something like rounded and symmetrical and you want these big floofs of, uh, you know, blue hydrangea, great it will be really easy to do. If you're trying to build something more organic and you're wanting those pops of blue, these are, you know, can be two really hard flowers to work with because as we hold them, okay, it's very linear. Then you add this. So you see how this can be weird, but we're gonna work through that together. And I will show you first how we have to prep these in order to work them into a bouquet. I'm gonna break your heart right off the bat and we've gotta par them down a little bit. So that is how you work with the hydrangea. I'm gonna leave it a little bit thicker and I can always pinch something off. This isn't trash, this can go in a bud vase, but because it's hydrangea, it definitely needs water. Uh, this one, let's pull off these lower ones. And it's really hard to take a perfectly beautiful flower and cut it apart, but you have to do it if you're gonna work with it. So let's cut these lower ones off. So this is a little bit more manageable, okay? And essentially how I'm gonna work with it, I've got these quicksand roses because I got a request to do a dusty rose um, and blue. So as we're working it into our bouquet, we might have to thread things in a little bit like this. And this is probably still too weighty and large, but I can always break it apart as I build. Okay, for the delphinium, same thing. We've got to, this is probably like the perfect piece. I've pulled all the lower buds off. And it's sad because delphinium isn't cheap and it's hard to just, you know, pull a lot of the blooms off, but Again, you have to do it. That's showbiz, baby. That's like our new favorite saying around flower moxie. Okay, so we pull this off. And another secret is you need, when you're working with very linear flowers, you need other things that are bouncy and linear. Because if you just have the, if you're building something of like roses and carnations, and then you have these guys just sticking out on their own, it's gonna feel very awkward. And you'll just, the, the composition will be weird. Um, it will look out of place. So we've got this delphinium, but I also snagged some stock because that's linear. Um, Lysianthus would be really nice. It's thin stemmed. I can let it like pop out of the bouquet and it can, um, break up the harsh line of this delphinium sticking out of the arrangement. I love delphinium for large scale things because it is kind of spindy. I don't like stripping all of the, all of the petals off. Um, so doing like urns, arches, this is where I reach for delphinium, but I have to use it sometimes in centerpieces and bouquets because I need that blue element and Tweedia keeps letting me down. Okay, I'm going to build, I think I'll do the spiral method. I'm really into that method right now. 
you're like, yeah, your last 20 videos have all been spiral. Um, I think that it's easier for a DIY bride. I think the X kind of, you know, running things at an X axis, there's, I think, more muscle memory in play when it comes to that. So let's, let's keep it simple and let's try spiral. Okay, so we're just starting with something a little bit heavier and we're bringing in some spray roses. Here's some stock. And so I'm letting that stock stick out a little bit because again, we need something to pull that um, delphinium into. And let's bring in this hydrangea. Let me clip off this piece. It's a little much. I'm gonna keep pulling it apart. Okay. And it's always hard to get it started. So don't, don't let yourself get flustered. So I'm gonna bring in a blush carnation. It's kind of strong and stable, coming in at that same angle to create my spiral. And I'm gonna nestle this um, carnation into this hydrangea to break it up a little bit. And I'm gonna elevate it. I want the hydrangea to sit lower into my bouquet. And I'm bringing in this cushion flower and I'm letting it sit above that hydrangea. So we're kind of seeing that that really harsh um, mound of blue is being broken up a little bit, which is what we're wanting. I don't know what this greenery is. It's a really nice variegated greenery from Israel that I've never seen before, but my, um, they didn't have any more silver queen pittosporum, which was what my preference was. So now I'm going to bring in a little bit of bounciness. I've got a butterfly ranunculus. Love these guys. We're not selling them at this time on Flower Moxie, but I might sell them in bulk because they're very sensitive, more temperamental. Um, so I don't know if it's ideal for a DIY uh, situation. So I've got a little bit of elevation happening with that. And then my spiral, and I'm gonna bring in a delphinium. And to help break up that line, I'll bring in a mini carnation. I used to look down my nose at these. Ah, oh, this one's not long enough. But I've grown to really love them because they have a little bit of bounciness, really nice texture, great colors. Clean that up a little bit. So we've got some nice softness happening. And we're gonna bring in another linear flower to complement that delphinium. Okay, so I'm moving a little bit slower. Typically with spiral, I can throw it together really quickly, but because we're working with these awkward shapes, I want to be a little bit more deliberate. These are like, Perfect blushy carnation. When I build uh, bouquets, especially bridal, I have a mirror right here that I always look at because I get such a different vantage point. And I'm cutting that down because it was a little bit bulky for me. So I've got some softness happening. These quicksand roses are absolute magic. Okay, so sometimes I lose placement and that's okay. I can, I can adjust. So this is what we've got going so far. Let's try to bring in another hydrangea and see if we can do that. I think this one is a little bit more ideal in its shape. The great thing about the spiral is you can easily grab and twist. 
So you can work that bouquet all the way around. So I've got this guy on the back side. It's a little bit much. And we're gonna bring in our ranunculus. I got these like really great fatty ranunculus. I had to wire every single one of them. The fatty, the <laughs> The fattier they are, they will bend under their own weight like every time. And that's okay because you can easily run a wire up the center of it, but if that is gonna upset you or scare you off, then just get Lysianthus or Spray Roses instead. So let's see what I got here. I'm liking this. I don't have the bounciness that I want, so I'm gonna have to add that in and adjust. So as a new florist, I would look at this and be like, oh, this isn't what I want. And I would start getting stressed. But when you're a little bit more seasoned, you're like, it's gonna come together. We can adjust things. Let's bring these guys in clusters. All right. So I already know just by looking at this in the mirror, too compact, but that's okay. I just want to get my, my placement all there. So I'm kind of alternating. I don't want a huge cluster of quicksand roses. I'm dispersing things pretty, pretty evenly. So if you can see, I'm just taking turns, twisting this uh, arrangement, and I'm looking in the mirror to figure out where I have, you know, where I need a quicksand or some greenery. Okay. Let's add some more delphinium. And I feel like I have a pretty big concentration so I can, you know, remove some of it or maybe I can try threading it, threading it in. So that's, that's more what I'm going to, to try to do to break that up visually. And it might be that I just, just snip off like a little cluster, but not the whole branch. See, that's a little bit better for me. All right, it's getting there, it's getting there. So we're taking out the spiral and those linear flowers aren't really showing up. So at this point, let's adjust. I loosen my grip and I give it a shake because I want some air happening and I want some movement. And I'm gonna take those bouncier flowers that sunk into my bouquet and I'm gonna elevate them. So I've got this stock that I can bring out. I want this uh, delphinium to show up. And I'm naturally falling into my uh, front and back sided bouquet. So this rose is a little bit too dense, too thick to, to really elevate it and have it bounce. It's too heavy. So I'm gonna sink it in a little bit and elevate the spray roses instead. A little bit too much. And I look for, this is where Lysianthus would be really fun to pull up into pull out of your bouquet. I have a bit of weirdness happening here. I don't want like a shelf. I, I want it to flow down. So I'm gonna pull that cushion flower in a little bit tighter. I feel like I just have a concentration of blue in a hole right here. So I can, um, at this point, 
I've got a pretty good spiral that I can thread things in. So let's bring in a close ranunculus bud. And sometimes I'll kind of hold things where I think that I want them before I take the time to have to thread them through. The threading is hard, but we just have to kind of work with what we're given with this hydrangea and just kind of take it nice and easy. There we go. So I've broken that up a little bit. And then I think I can get away with a little bit more delphinium. Yes. So see, we're starting to get this really soft, um, hand-picked garden feel. We're working with those really linear flowers that are awkward and that can be kind of challenging to work with. Yeah, like I feel like I can handle that. Well, maybe it's I think it's curving too much. So I have a little bit of a concentration of white stock right here. And I don't, I don't hate it, but I don't think it's doing my bouquet a lot of favors. So I'm gonna remove it. <clears throat> this is a really like small piece of greenery short, and I can bring that in at the bottom and tuck it in and grab it with my fingers. This makes a more finished bottom. I don't want this awkward shelf and that's, I could probably think of a better word for it, but shelf is the only thing that's coming to mind. But you want, yeah, you want the bottom finished. So I bring it in at an angle, pick it up with my other hands. At this point, I'm just looking in the mirror, um, finding different opportunities to elevate flowers I wanna see more of, and pulling up these little floaters or dancers. And uh, um, mini carnations are really great for that. You like, stop trying to sell me on those. And yeah, we're getting there, almost there. I've got a little bit of drapiness with this spray rose, so I'm probably gonna pinch that one off. I wanna add another quicksand. I feel like I can, yeah, I kinda add it to the back to create some fullness. Here we go. I spend probably more time adjusting a bouquet than I do building it. And that's normal. You're just gonna sit and look at it and kind of figure out the different things that you can add. And butterfly ranunculus are similar to Lysianthus where you have multiple stems attached to a main stem and you can easily take it apart. I like that guy draping off. Okay, so it's getting a little bit compact. I'm gonna finish it off and we can loosen it up a smidge. So I have a zip tie that I'm gonna wrap around it.
and I did not crank it down. So at this point, I'm gonna reach in with my fingers and loosen it up. I actually need this zip ties too small. 12 inch zip ties honestly work the best for bridal bouquets, let me grab one. Okay, I've got a 12 inch zip tie and this is my final step. And I don't tighten it down that much. I still want it to be able to wiggle it around and have looseness. So at this point, I relax my hands and I shake my bouquet. And I'll get my fingers in and I'll thread it in and start uh, shaking that bouquet up a little bit because it was getting a bit too compact for me. Like all the flowers were coming in on themselves and when things start getting smashed, you know it's like too tight. So you don't want holes, but you do want air and it's, it's a, the larger your bouquet becomes, the more that you have to, to do this. Now, I really like where it's at. It has movement, not too wild. I was able to work with these harder blue flowers and we did this just by adding linear and bouncier flowers, elevating other things so they wouldn't just be sticking out all on their own. And I love it. I think it's a really soft, romantic, um, no fuss bouquet. I like that guy hanging out on his own. <laughs> I'm always like, maybe I can do more of that. You never know when to quit. I always quit when I'm out of time <laughs> or out of flowers. So at this point, I will see if I can add anything. Um, I still have the zip tie on it. Actually kept that loose enough. I can just thread that in and maybe not have to cut this one away and waste a zip tie. I'm struggling too much with it. It's just easier to cut it away and add a new one. My videographer's like, wrap it up. <laughs> so hard. Okay, so this is my back. So it's not a total fan, but when I hand this off to a bride, um, or if you are the bride creating this bouquet, I do like to have a little bit of finishing on the back, but I don't put my nicer flowers in the back because you're gonna need to lay it down and it can easily uh, you know, be set down on this carnation. Now in front, I have my more delicate flowers. At this point, I take one last look at it, make any adjustments I need, loosen it up. And at this point, I like to cut things um, really short. And I will do that now and show you why. So I might use these flowers for a centerpiece, so I'm not gonna cut them as short as what I would if it was just ready to go and ready to be handed off but I usually cut them about this length when I'm done. And when I get to the venue uh, and I wrap the ribbon on it, I will cut it again and cut it a, a little bit shorter. The reason being is I don't want to see a lot of stems and I want her to be able to move with that bouquet. So if you're the bride, when you um, make your bouquet, when you hold it, you wanna think about like resting your hands on your hip bones or holding that bouquet belly button level. It's this natural instinct to wanna like hold it a little bit tighter, closer to your chest, but you don't want to um, cover up like the, the pretty neckline of your dress and it just looks more natural when it's held uh, more belly button level. And so then when you take pictures, more than likely you'll have a photographer that will you know, kind of guide you but it is helpful um, to maybe practice if you're making just a practice bouquet to stand in the mirror and just try it at different angles um, because a lot of times photographers will just have you like 
lay your hand down or grip it, you know, from behind. And that's why it's so helpful to cut these short is you can move more naturally with your bouquet. So if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe and visit flowermoxie.com. Thank you so much.